it starts through the Rust Belt, mm-hmm. the Blue Wall map with Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Those are the states that are going to see the most investment. Those are the states that you already see investment from super PACs on both sides. Millions of dollars are already being spent on the air in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And that, I think, is where you're going to see if there is campaigning resume at (laughs) some point where the candidates end up spending most of their time, where the surrogates end up spending most of their time. It's where Joe Biden has been doing sort of satellite local TV interviews, Zoom interviews for the moment. Sort of the second tier state that is going to be a battleground once again, just because it is a perennial battleground and it's the biggest battleground is going to be Florida. 29 electoral votes, you know, it comes within reach of Democrats, it seems to, and then it falls out of reach at the end when all the votes are counted. But polling looks good there. And the question that Biden is going to have to face in speaking to Democrats is, does he have the money to really compete there. David Pluff says it's a $100 million decision that he's going to have to make soon. Yeah. I, Hillary Clinton spent $80 million in Florida only to lose it. We know Trump's got the money and we know it's his home state now. So, I mean, there's no path for him without Florida. Mm-hmm. So Florida, sort of that second tier state, that would be the fourth state in addition to Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. And then there are sort of the future states. The two states most sort of referenced in this category are Arizona, which is obviously out west, which is looking more promising for Democrats because of increased Hispanic participation, but also moderate Republican women who are turned off by Trump, who rewarded Democrats out there in 2018. So put Arizona in a future state and then the the toughest state probably for Democrats to flip but is on their radar is North Carolina, Mm -hmm. which is obviously in the McClatchy family market. So we'll be paying a lot of attention to it. It's got a governor's race. It's got what is expected to be the most expensive Senate race. You know, it's a state that Trump won by three and a half points. So it's a bit out of that tier of Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, which were, you know, obviously the closest. Mm -hmm. And Democrats say that's a reach, but that it will be competitive. And that's the ballgame. Those are the six core states that in conversations with both sides, those are the states that are repeatedly mentioned in sort of that order of priority as I laid them out. Now you're going to hear... You're going to hear cases for other states. There there will be some reach states. Oh, we'll put Texas in play. Some people will say, let's put some money into Georgia if you're the Democrats. Trump is going to look at New Hampshire. He's going to look at Nevada. He's going to look at Minnesota. That gets you to about 12 states overall. But in overall in conversations, they say those top six are where this election will be won and lost and basically played out. Yeah, let's stay with those six for a second. Would also note that uh, Priorities USA, which is sort of the leading super PAC on the Democratic side, they just laid down their kind of initial ad buys for the fall heading into the general election. And those are the six states that right. they're, they're spending their first wave of money in. And Michael, uh, you know, the one thing that sticks out to me about those states first and foremost is that they're all states that Trump carried in 2016. It seems like kind of no matter how you slice and dice this map, you know, Trump is going to be, be playing defense. I think that's probably right, although his campaign believes that he's been very strong in Florida up until this point, (laughs) obviously. They've been spooked by recent poll figures. Dave, I actually, I was wondering, because you you mentioned Georgia and Texas as as reach states, but from what I've been hearing, yes, the, the expectation is Republicans will still hold them, but the campaign seems to be taking the threat more seriously than they did in 2016. At least it seems as if they feel they'll be forced to spend more money Absolutely. there than they have. And why do you think that may be? I mean, I, I think that's totally true. But if, if you really drill Democrats on it, they think they can get, I mean, Dan Wagner ran analytics for Obama in 2012, and he went through all these states. And he said, look, we're going to make Republicans spend more money in Texas. We're going to make them spend more money in Georgia. If you put an African-American on the ticket, which Joe Biden may likely very well do, Kamala Harris, Stacey Abrams in Georgia, obviously that's going to gin up excitement. That's, going to, that's history there. The numbers are changing. But if you really put truth serum on the Dems, they'll say, look, we could probably get within a point, within two points. Can we win it? Wow, we need everything to go our way. We need a total collapse 
We need a shredding of Trump's base not coming out. We need Republicans crossing over. We, we can't just win that on Dem turnout, even high Dem turnout alone. So Dan Wagner called them white whales and that they will get a lot of attention. A lot of money will be poured into them. But in the end, you better make sure you've got Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin. I mean, this is the mistake Hillary made. I mean, right. she went to Arizona. She put money into Texas. And, you know, look what happened. So I think there's going to even be more anxiety over, wow, you better make sure you've got your core states in the blue bucket before you start playing for Texas. And I think, you know, we're going to write stories probably in a month, say hey, Texas might be in play. But I would just put that as still a, a, in a different tier as those first six. Right.